Good morning, grace to you and peace. It is Thursday morning, June 18th. It has been a very busy week around here at the church, meetings day and night, and this is my first chance to sit quietly and share with you all uh, a pastor's pondering. Um, I had a funeral the first part of the week, and for some reason, when I read familiar words at that service, they spoke to me again, which I believe each one of you can ask a pastor or anyone who is regularly into God's Word. You can read a passage countless numbers of times, and it can speak to you differently, and that's a gift of God. So I want to read to you from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, familiar words, and then I'll skip down toward verse 14. But um, it just struck me about what a time we are in right now as I read these graveside words uh, earlier this week. Listen for what God says to us. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What can I say? I hope you heard these words anew this time, because it has been a time for many of these opposites in our society. Uh, we have certainly had births, and they have been celebrated, but there has been much death in our national and global lives lately. Um, it's been a time to heal. It's been a time to weep. It's been a time to mourn. It's been a time to refrain from embracing. So many of these things, these polarities, we have had in our time. A time to seek. We're diligently seeking um, a cure and a preventative uh, for this COVID-19. Um, a time to speak, a time to love, a time for peace. Um, this is a time to speak out on many social justice issues. All of them really are coming kind of to a conflagration uh, because of our quarantine during this COVID time, because of things uh, which happen in uh, criminal justice uh, pursuit, so much that we could say that that we are speechless we are tired we um, can only guess at the frustration and grief and weariness of others and so i find this a time especially to pray for all a time to pray for those who are still in special um, peril because of COVID-19. Even though things are opening up, that may make it less safe for you to go to the store because you have been able to observe really close uh, precautions against uh, COVID-19. I have gone to the stores and here they frankly are still enforcing mask rules, etc. But I know that what we see on the news of people out and about, many of them do not have on masks. So my prayer right now is for those for whom this is an especially scary time and indeed a dangerous time. My prayer is with those who for years, years, years have uh, 
made us aware that it is less safe to be an African American than it is to be a white American. And um, that has come to the forefront now and may it never be ignored again. May things change. May there be uh, laws, certainly laws, um, but may there be just an awareness as, of one another in, as people and what we face going through our lives each day. Um, I, I am really speechless right now on that message, and I think we all need to think about what we are called to do and what we are called to say and ways in which we can be allies for those who are fighting so hard right now for rights that we take for granted. So um, may you do that. Um, I, I want to say that in some small way to try to um, ameliorate that disparity and to try for us to understand a little bit more what um, friends and um, people of color are going through. We are right now on Thursday night, uh, sorry, Tuesday nights at 7.30 having a Zoom Bible study uh, each week on the syllabus, you will note a different scripture reference. Uh, and then the book which we are using to discuss in our white lives is Waking Up White by Debbie Irving. You can get that as an ebook uh, on your Kindle or your Nook. Um, you can order it used or whatever. But if you get a hold of that, um, most of you who are hearing me, I believe it will speak to you. If you are white and perhaps a baby boomer or a little bit younger than that, I think it will speak to you. So we're going to unpack that together. We have five more weeks to go. We started uh, this past uh, Tuesday, but with some technical difficulties. So please email me at pastorlee at firstpresscranford.org and I will be happy to send you the syllabus and the Zoom link invitation for that meeting. I also recorded last week's uh, Zoom and I believe I can share that link with you and you would be able to view it if you are interested. Um, something else that I wanted to share with you uh, on a happy note, that study is a happy note by the way, but I wanted to share with you that we are going to begin next Tuesday, which I believe is, uh, what, the 23rd, I think? Yeah, 23rd. We are going to begin in the chapel, which is air-conditioned, <laughs> um, morning song, a morning prayer service at 7.30. It will last no more than half an hour, but if you are one who is hopeful to get back into the church building uh, and have a mini worship, we will still continue our live streaming on Sundays and we are very grateful for the number of you who tune in for that. But uh, for some, we can take 20, up to 25, depending on if people, if people are individual or if they are in couples or families, uh, for that worship service. It's bright and early, so someone can stop in on their way to work if they are back working now. It's bright and early for those of us who are early risers. So 7.30 Tuesday morning here at First Presbyterian Church, Cranford, in the chapel. We will have our first morning song. It will include uh, some morning prayer liturgy from the Book of Worship, and it will include some uh, meditative DVD music and a brief word from me. So it will be uh, last no more than 30 minutes, and it's your chance to come wear a mask and you will be um, shown how we do the socially distanced seating for that uh, morning song service is what I am calling it. So I hope to see some of you here next Tuesday, the 23rd. Um, this morning I'm sitting here with one of my treasures. I thought I would show that to you. Let's see, up, oh, okay, there we go. So this beautiful mug was given to me by one of my congregations in Virginia. <laughs> Take a sip while I have it in my hand. And 
and that mug is uh, the windows on it, the, the stained glass windows on it are uh, by Lewis Comfort Tim Tiffany and they are the windows of the disciples of Jesus which are found in the Blandford Church Chapel which uh, is on the cemetery grounds uh, of the Siege of Petersburg. So um, it is a timely reminder of the Civil War and its aftermath, uh, from which our nation has never healed and from which discrimination has continued, right? Um, but that is a beautiful place, that chapel. You can go in that chapel. I have um, ancestors buried in that churchyard. There is a mass grave there on the grounds where you can walk around, which is a um, burial place for unknown soldiers who died uh, on that field. Someone asked me if it was Confederate soldiers, and I honestly don't know if it would be only Confederate soldiers, though I imagine it would be predominantly, but I don't honestly know historically if bodies that were just found on that field were all interred together or what. So there's a point of history that I'm ignorant on. But sitting in that chapel with those windows, obviously uh, placed in the 20th century, um, it's just a powerful place. And when I left this particular congregation, I was given this mug, and so it's very meaningful to me. Um, but if you've not seen that place in Virginia and do not know the story of how that came to be one of the last battles of the Civil War, it's a powerful story. And for me, understanding that war in any sense right now uh, can help us understand what is happening now and help us to change things. So I encourage you always to be more informed about what is going on in our society and what has led to things which happen now in our society. So I thank you for your time today. I want to close us with a prayer, and I hope that uh, what I have said will spur some thought, will spur some prayer, will spur some action in your life. Take care. Let's pray. Gracious God, there is so much going on that sometimes it is good just to stop with nothing going on around us and in silence meditate outside on the beauty we can see, inside on uh, looking around us, looking inside ourselves for places where we have growing edges, where you can help us grow, when you, where you can help us change, where your spirit can impel us forward on a path to help others as you empower us to do. Uh, we just pray that you would uh, continue to keep us in safety as we go about what we do in the world right now, even though it is limited. We pray for those who might be tempted to get out in foolish ways right now. Please give them a sense of doing what is safe for themselves, for their loved ones, and for one another in our society. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you all and have a great week.